This is my reply to the Dutch philosopher. In this video, you seem to be telling me that most of the things I thought you were saying in your last video are not what you were actually saying. I want to clarify a couple things, but obviously many of these points are moot if you don't mean it the way I thought you did. The naturalism bit appears to be a misunderstanding. Hawking is a scientist, and therefore a methodological naturalist, so I assumed that's what you meant. It wouldn't really make sense for you to mean philosophical naturalism here. The definition of naturalism you show implies absolute active disbelief. That's not a position I hold or anything I was referring to. I'm not sure why you would be talking about something other than methodological naturalism, unless you were maybe implying that Hawking is advocating some other sort of naturalism. Also, when I'm under the impression that you mean methodological naturalism and you say wholly separate from science, that makes me think you were arguing against methodological naturalism, thereby arguing implicitly for some sort of presupposed supernatural entity. As for the assumption of atheism, it is not my position that there is no God, as you say. Is that maybe what you thought Hawking was saying? That would be a reason why you would be talking about something other than methodological naturalism. Did you get that from his video and book that he is arguing that gods are logically impossible based on what he knows about science? That's not what I got out of it. It sounds like he was just making a case for why a god isn't necessary. The most quoted phrase in his book is, It is not necessary to invoke god to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going. But if you thought he was saying science proves gods are impossible, and you were arguing that is not the case, then I would agree with you on that. I assumed you were arguing against his explicit statement that God isn't needed. So in that way, we are both arguing against a position the other does not hold. Anything I said is only going to make sense if you were saying that God is somehow needed. but. If that's not what you mean, that would explain why you didn't understand what I was talking about. There was a part of your first video where you talk about material and personal causes, which is why I addressed that. So, I guess that was some tangent you went on that wasn't part of your argument. So, the red herring was unintentional. I was under the misconception that that part was relevant. Sorry about the dishonesty bit, but I did only say it appeared that way because of an inconsistency, so I never said you were for sure doing that, but I'll withhold any cynical speculation in the future. Copenhagen is the most widely accepted interpretation of quantum physics and is the one most commonly taught. Very few people have the mathematical skill and knowledge to work out the equations themselves, myself included. As far as I know, other interpretations vary only in the details and not much on the more fundamental things. As for best, well, that's subjective. It can only be based on what one values most in the aspects of the differing theories so it's only possible for me to answer for myself. Which interpretation do you use and why? Does it allow for causality without space-time? As for the argument from ignorance, it's actually based on equations, so it can't be an argument from ignorance as it's not entirely presupposed. The theories are extrapolated with reason from the objective fact of the mathematics involved. There's nothing deceptive about particles going in and out of existence in a vacuum. There is empirical evidence for that. That part is only very loosely related to the Big Bang anyway. 
Here we are talking about a vacuum in space-time, whereas the Big Bang started with no time or spatial dimensions. The energy fluctuation is actually what empty space is. That is the negative energy Hawking was talking about. It's not nothing. Nobody ever said that. Now, moving on to the Big Bang, which is something different, Spatial dimensions in time came into being with the Big Bang. So there was nothing before that, but there was also no before. Language kind of fails with a concept like that, but the starting point is no time or space. For lack of a better term, you could maybe call the lack of space-time the cause. It's kind of confusing because causality starts with time. It's based on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but as it would be applied to a singularity. If you look up the timeline of the Big Bang, you can get a better explanation of it. It's difficult to understand, though. There is a field of study called quantum cosmology where the object is to learn more about this. At this point, I have to ask again which interpretation of quantum physics you are using that allows for Newtonian-like laws to be universally acceptable, since you said you aren't using Newtonian physics. As far as I know, such an interpretation is highly sought after, but has so far proven to be elusive. Now we come to the options, which is where you press the claim that this is a valid dichotomy. The Big Bang has been postulated to happen from universes colliding, energy from another universe, a previous universe occupying these dimensions that collapsed. The dimensions of this universe may have come from random vacuum fluctuations in a, uni in a universe existing in other dimensions, and a previous universe that has reached maximum entropy. I have limited my additional options to actual theories I have heard put forth by scientists and only ones I could think of right off the top of my head. Now, as far as what I said about your options, I was under the impression you were making some sort of a cosmological argument. So, no straw man was intended, I was just mistaken about what you were trying to say. Now, at the end of your video, I completely agree with you. I read that book right after it came out, and I must have blocked that line out of my mind. But it came right back after you mentioned it. Yeah. I had to pause for a few minutes and yell at them through their book how utterly stupid that was. They were saying that philosophy is dead and is being replaced with a philosophy. I think what they meant is that there is no need for reason when they have empiricism. However, even that is just face-palmingly stupid, since you can't do much with your empirical data if you, you, if you don't use reason. Maybe they mean certain philosophies are dead. I don't know, but it's silly. But I think what you should have done, rather than say they are abandoning philosophy, which doesn't make sense, is to simply point out that it's self-contradictory to carry on with a philosophy if you've declared them all dead. Or you could criticize them for failing to understand that empiricism overlaps a lot of other philosophical positions. As I have stated before, based on your response, I think I did misunderstand many of the points you were making. It's the naturalism in the context of Hawking thing. That's what gave me the wrong idea initially. Like I was saying, I was very tentative with my accusation of possible dishonesty and deception. If that wasn't your intention, then I take it back. I've always been very cynical. Despite that, I do try to give people the benefit of the doubt. 